Despite months and months of negotiations, the Iran nuclear deal is still not close to being clinched. After the Russia-Ukraine war broke out and European countries became desperate for oil, it seemed a deal would happen very soon. However, despite the Europeans striving really hard and the Iranians willing to make compromises, we are no closer to an agreement. Recently, the European Union's chief diplomat Sepp Borrell said that the deal was in danger. Why is the deal not in the bag despite everyone seeming to be in its favour? Who is playing spoiled sport? Rania Khalik of Breakthrough News explains. So yes, there is this kind of cyclical process where, uh, you know, for a month or so, there's positive developments, we're so close to a deal, and then another month, it's there's no deal, it's happening right now, it's stalled for this or that reason. This time around, the reason is, uh, it seems to be around the issue, or at least from the American side, they're saying it's around the issue of the IAEA monitoring Iran and that Iran is refusing to abide by conditions that would have them back under this like strict monitoring regulation of this international agency of their uh, uranium enrichment. Mm -hmm. And that would strict that would severely limit their ability to enrich uranium. Uh, but the Iranians are saying that this is actually not something that they're not willing to agree to. They would be willing to agree to this. The problem is that the Americans are refusing to guarantee the lifting of sanctions. And for the Iranians, that is the ultimate issue here is the sanctions. And if the Americans can't guarantee the lifting of the sanctions, then Iran really has nothing to gain from this deal. Um, but I do want to emphasize that this time around, you know, there are, as, as every time, there are several different players with a vested interest in the Iran deal, either making it happen or blocking it. And that's important to keep in mind, too. And here I raise the issue of the Israelis. The Israelis, of course, are aligned with American neocons and doing everything in their power to prevent this deal. And Israeli Prime Minister Yair Lapid actually went on like a lobbying tour, basically advocating against the deal, begging the Americans not to let it happen. And part of this is due to the fact that elections are coming up in Israel. And Netanyahu has been attacking Lapid as like being soft on Iran. So he wants to look strong. But also the Israelis want Iran isolated and weak. And a deal would, a nuclear deal, would bring Iran back into the international economic system because it would come with some sanctions relief. So the Israelis aren't like really scared. They're not actually scared that Iran will obtain a nuclear weapon. Um, and everyone knows that the Iranians aren't trying to obtain a nuclear weapon. Had they wanted to, they could have already. What this is really about is they don't want Iran's economy to flourish because they believe that if Iran has a healthy economy, it can then give more funding and weapons to its resistance allies across the region, like Hezbollah, that act as a deterrence against the Israeli aggression, and of course, as well as the Palestinians. So the Israelis want the Iranian economy to continue to be in ruins over sanctions. And this is, of course, while Israel continues its campaign of like sabotage against Iran and its regional allies. Uh, they're constantly taking credit for sabotaging not just the nuclear deal, but also uh, trying to, you know, uh, kill or assassinate Iranian scientists, uh, sabotaging Iranian sh uh, ships and these sorts of things. Um, so all that said, Lapid is also trying to use this as a way to, like, increase his poll numbers ahead of elections. So there's always like an Israeli election element to this. The Americans, however, are saying, well, they've actually told the Israelis, don't worry, the deal's on, like stalled for now. That, like I mentioned, has to do with the Americans adding demands that um, they're not willing to budge on surrounding uranium enrichment. So they want Iran to give up all enriched uh, uranium that they have been enriching uh, throughout the time that the U.S. ripped up the deal. Um, anything that's been enriched to 20 percent and 60 percent that's in Iran's possession, they want them to give that up, which would be like hundreds of kilograms of enriched uranium. And they want them to remove that from Iran and then take uh, whatever they have stored out of like Iranian possession and bas basically put it under the possession of the International Atomic Energy Agency, the IAEA, which would then continue its strict monitoring of Iran's nuclear facilities. Um, and the Americans are saying that the Iranians are refusing to allow the strict monitoring. And I, I think it's important to note here that this is actually a violation of sovereignty. I mean, no other country has to expose themselves to this level of strict monitoring. This is purely just because it's Iran. No other country. I mean, Israel literally has, it's the only country in the Middle East that actually has nuclear weapons. And that's not even an official admission. Everybody just knows they do. And there's no monitoring whatsoever of their uranium enrichment or anybody else's, just the Iranians to this strict level. The Iranians are saying that they're still not receiving any American guarantees 
that if they sign a deal, the Americans will abide by it and not allow the next administration to rip it up like Trump did. And the Iranians, for their part, are also saying that they are, in fact, willing to accept the verification of their nuclear activities, uh, even to the extremely strict level of the IAEA, uh, but only if the parties who signed the 2015 nuclear deal fulfilled their obligations to lift the sanctions against Iran. And I mean, as far as they see it, why should Iran right, have to abide by these measures if the other side doesn't have to abide by theirs? And Iran actually did abide by those strict measures for a year after the deal was torn up by the U.S. to see if others would continue to abide by the deal. But at one point, it was just the, the violations by the United States were just too outrageous. The Europeans were starting to join in on the sanctions that the U.S. was placing under the Trump administration on the Iranians. So the Iranian parliament actually ratified a bill that obliges the government to expand the country's nuclear activities in response to the violations committed by the American side. And of course, none of this is ever mentioned in the Western press. It's just whatever Americans uh, say is the problem. So Iran is constantly getting blamed for this deal being stalled. And I mean, the last thing I'll mention here is that there's also domestic politics inside the U.S. to consider. Um, you know, the, the deal is stalled now. And according to Israeli media, the Biden administration, right, gave them a guarantee not to worry that there won't be a deal. And I think that has to do with the fact that, you know, Biden may have been interested in restoring the deal when he first became president. But it seems that now that interest has faded um, because it doesn't really benefit him in the upcoming midterm elections. Americans don't care about the Iran deal right now. So there's nothing as far as like the horse race politics of America is concerned. There's nothing that Biden really has to gain uh, from reentering a deal with Iran. If anything, it might even just give his Republican counterpart something to use against him, saying that, you know, you're soft on Iran, you're soft on terrorism. So that likely has something to do with the American lack of real interest in doing this. In the meantime, the U.S. has continued to sanction Iran, you know, denying them like access to food and medicine and all the kinds of horrible things destroying their economy that comes with sanctions. They continue to steal Iranian oil and sell it, which is just like straight up piracy, while the Americans are constantly approved, like approving of Israeli sabotage efforts. Uh, of Iran, which again includes assassinating their scientists, bombing, you know, supposed Iranian militias in Syria. So the Americans, I think, are just, they care about Ukraine right now, not Iran. And at the moment, though, the reason I raise Ukraine is because besides Iran, you know, another loser in all of this is actually the Europeans, because the Europeans are so desperate to increase global oil output uh, and to, you know, in order to decrease oil prices, uh, as well as you know, they want to find another gasoline or another source of gas, another source of energy, since they've basically sanctioned themselves with their sanctions on Russia, their biggest uh, energy exporter until now. So, and, you know, as the Iranians keep reminding the Europeans, winter is coming and the Europeans are looking at a very tough winter ahead, possibly with uh, energy rationing, maybe even some power cuts. People are not going to be able to afford their electricity bills. And so they're really worried about this leading to chaos and instability in Europe. So they were really hoping for a deal. They were even hoping to maybe have a specific European-Iranian deal that maybe didn't even include the Americans. But unfortunately, that's not even happening. As we've seen with the war in Ukraine, European leaders are perfectly willing to sacrifice their people for U.S. empire. So rather than just pushing forward with an agreement with Iran, they've essentially gone along with the U.S., and not just enacting sanctions against Iran that they don't even want with Iran. They don't really benefit from sanctions with Iran. It would actually behoove them to have Iran as a trade partner. But the Europeans are also echo echoing the American side against Iran.